Well, hello there. We're continuing our march to Muse Mobile by creating the content rotator in Animate. And the first step of the process, of course, is to create a brand new Animate file. So I'll just click Create New and set the stage size to 950 by 300, which is the size of our content. Now, one of the things that we're going to want to do as we move through this project is keep an eye on where this thing is going to be used. It's going to show up on the desktop, tablets, and on smartphones. And that means the content is going to have to expand or shrink depending upon the size of the screen of the device we are using. This is basically responsive design. So we're going to add responsive features in Animate to this project as we move through. And the first step in the process, let's set the stage to uh, become a bit more responsive than 950 by 300. We're going to change it to 100%. Okay, so you just click that little switch there. And now the stage is 100%. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. I'll take it to uh, 80%. And I'm just going to center the screen. So there we go. We can see everything. And you see these little handles here. If I move it, you can move the stage in and out. And that little carrot you see tells me that's the original size. So I can up and down. OK, so then we've got the stage responsive. Next step is to start bringing in the content. And I'm going to show you a little teacher trick. One of the uh, ways of bringing content in, of course, is to use the uh, import menu right there. Uh, Another way of doing it is to simply drag and drop the content from whatever folder the content is located in right onto the stage from the desktop. There's an even cooler way of doing it. If I uh, pop over to the finder here, there's my folder, Animate, and inside that Animate folder is a folder called Images. And if I open it up, you can see there are the three images that are going to appear in the rotator. And there's one here called Poster PNG. Now, why would I have a Poster PNG image? Sometimes connections are slow. It will take time for the content to load. You want to have something showing in that slot, and that could be the Poster image. So we're going to be using this later on in the project. So now that we know where it is, we can just do a file. save as and we can just save it right to that animate folder so we'll just call it rotate click save and there are the images As a matter of fact that whole images folder has come in so this way you don't have to take stuff off the stage and then move it back in at a later later point in time you just basically bring in the whole folder of images and use them as you need them speaking of which let's get started now, the first image I want to bring in is the Cafe JPG image. That's the one that's going to start this whole thing off. So I just dragged it out, put it at the 0, 0 point. You can see X, Y, 0. And what I want to do with this is make this responsive as well. And you can see that the scaling, if any, is applied. It's going to be applied to the upper left corner right here. That's fine. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Now, I'm going to use a preset for this, and that's what this little button is here. So I click the preset, and then there's this one here scale the background image because it's all one big image why not scale it so i select it click apply and now i'm good to go all right so i want this image to uh, appear for about one second and then the other image will roll in over it over another second so i'm going to take this out to two seconds and what i'm going to do with the cafe is i'm going to set its display property to off and you can see it disappears from the screen but if i come in there it is gone. So display is a great way of removing content from the stage. Basically, you're hiding it. Okay, so I've got that done. And the next step of the process is to bring in the church. And we'll bring the church image in and we'll pop it up against 00. zero. There it is. And of course, we're going to add that scale background image preset to it. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to have it become visible at this point. And we come up to the display property and we just turn it on. Now you'll notice that it's dark here. That tells me it's off, and if it's light here, it tells me it's on. So if I come over, see? All right, so now what we're gonna do is move this into position. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, click hold with the mouse, move this over to the edge of the screen. There we go. And then over one second, I'm going to have it come in so I can just set the left property here to zero. 
And there it is. And if I scrub across, you can see it comes in. The next image we're going to bring in, of course, is the street JPG image. And we'll just put it up on top of this one. It's at zero, zero. Again, we're going to apply that preset to it. Click apply. And now what we're going to do is turn it on at the two second mark. Move it off the stage. Come out one second. And set the left property to zero. And if I come back to the start and press the space bar, you can see the content rolls in. This is good. Now, I want to turn the church off at this point here where this one comes in. So I'm going to just set the church's property to off. So I'm going to set, click on the church, and I'm at the three-second mark, so I just click off. And you can see there's the church, and then this comes in, it turns off. Now, the next step in the process is to have this thing basically loop. And one of the ways you can do that is to have this last one sort of appear, stay put for about three quarters of a second. And then when it hits this three and three quarter second mark, start playing backwards. And you can do that using a trigger. So I'm just going to click the insert trigger button. This will open the snippets panel and there just happens to be a snippet called play reverse. And if I close the code editor and test the movie, command return or control enter if you're on a PC, this will open the browser and you can see in come the images and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do except for the fact that it stays on relax. Now here's the responsive stuff. Notice as I make this bigger and smaller, this gets bigger and smaller as well. So I'm a happy little camper here. Okay, I'm going to close this. Well, the problem we had here is that when it comes back here, there's nothing to say, hey, look, go forward. So what we're going to do is go to the zero point, insert a trigger, and we're just going to say play. And now if we test the movie, there it comes, there it comes, and it goes back off, goes back off, comes back in. So there we go. There's the composition doing exactly what we wanted the composition to do. Now that we've got everything in place and working the way we want it to work, time to output it. Now, Muse will not take the runtimes or the HTML files that are created by Animate. It's, it's a very complicated process, so you really don't want to do it. So you want to do something simple. And the simple is creating a package. And here's how you do that. File, Publish Settings, and we're going to create an Animate Deployment Package. We're not going to create for web. We're going to create an Animate Deployment Package. And what this is, is basically a container format with all the files that would normally make up an Animate file all in one little package. In many respects, it's like a zip file. Now that we've got that selected, it's going to go into a folder called Publish, called Animate Package, and it's going to be in the same folder as the project. So it's going to be in the Animate folder. Now we're going to need that poster image just in case it takes a second or two to load. So we're going to choose that poster image right there. And that's done. And you can see, there it is. There's the poster. And it's going into the images folder to get the poster. Now what you don't do is save. All that does is just save these settings. What you do is you click Publish. And you get that little black flash and everything is wonderful. And let's take a look at the files that were created. So we'll just go over to our original folder. I'll just uh, minimize this. Let's open up the Animate folder. There's the Animate project with all the files you need, but there's that Publish folder. And if I open it, there's that Animate package, and there's the Rotate OAM file, which will be used in Muse. So there you go. There's creating the content rotator in Animate. A fairly simple process. If you're looking to go to multiple display sizes or screen sizes, start looking at working with the responsive features. Uh, we started with the stage by turning it into percentages, and then with every image that came in, we uh, also changed it to a responsive layout as well. 
In the next video, we'll take this project and heave it into Muse. I'll see you there.